Welcome to this Wood Solutions campus presentation on the life cycle assessment of timber rich and other material construction systems. All material production and building systems generate environmental impacts. For those committed to sustainable development, the difficulty is knowing which materials or construction systems have relatively low environmental impacts so that they can be favoured in design. One potential method is to compare the embodied energy of the material or construction system. The embodied energy is the total of all energy required to make and install the materials used in construction and maintaining the building. However, while embodied energy comparisons can provide a useful indicator of environmental impact, they have limitations and should only be used as a broad guide. A more detailed and accurate method is life cycle assessment. Life cycle assessment, or LCA, is a method to systematically evaluate the environmental impacts or costs generated over the lifetime of a product or a system from cradle to grave. LCAs then provide results based on a unit of utility relevant to the product. This could be for the single use of a garbage bag or the provision of a square metre of housing over a 50 year operational life. Life cycle assessment is particularly helpful for comparing the costs or impact of a number of options that do the same job. For example, ceramic coffee cups and disposable coffee cups do the same job. An LCA study can indicate which option produces the lowest environmental impact in a cafe over a single use or over a one year period. Life cycle assessment is also used for benchmarking products against each other. In this way, the relative environmental impact or efficiency of a product or systems can be identified. Life cycle assessment processes have been developed from complex process engineering techniques and so preparing a life cycle analysis is the highly specialised task. The stages in a life cycle analysis include setting the study's goal and scope such as the functional unit of a comparison and the system's boundaries, compiling an inventory of relevant inputs and outputs of a product or system, evaluating the potential environmental impacts associated with those inputs and outputs, and interpreting the results of the inventory and impact phases in relation to the objectives of the study. To run an LCA, the environmental impacts of various material and processes are determined through a life cycle inventory or LCI. This diagram shows just a small part of the connections considered in an LCA. It is a schematic overview of the recommended linkage of impact and damage categories discussed during a recent program to develop consistent LCA information in Australia. Some of the impact categories include global warming potential or GWP. This is a measure of greenhouse gas emissions such as carbon dioxide and methane. Ozone depletion potential. This is the measure of air emissions that contribute to the depletion of the stratospheric ozone layer. Eutrophication potential, this is a measure of nutrient enrichment that may cause an undesirable shift in species composition such as algal blooms. And photochemical ozone creation potential, this is a measure of emissions that can contribute to smog formation. The complexity involved in an LCA study addresses many of the limitations of other methods of environmental comparison, such as simple embodied energy comparison, However, it also means that LCAs are too complex to use for everyday decision making about construction options. Let's now look at two LCA studies and see what they can tell us about the relative performance of timber and other construction systems. The first study was conducted in 2010 and compared the whole of life impacts of a typical 5 star rated Australian house design using 5 construction systems over 3 climates. The construction systems varied from those with very little timber to those that optimised timber use, and the climates studied were Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane in Australia. The functional unit compared in this study was one square metre of floor space per year with an assumed house life of 50 years. As the houses were the same plan, the results were directly comparable. They include the CO2 emission generated from making and installing the material in the building and operating the building for 50 years. The general result was that the timber rich solutions had lower greenhouse gas emissions than the solutions that used less timber over the 50 year period of operation. This is obvious for each climate zone 
the emission savings are about 11% for Melbourne and up to 24% for Sydney. What is also obvious is the higher greenhouse emissions for houses in Melbourne, the blue columns in the chart. This is because Melbourne's climate is colder and houses there have much higher operational energy than houses in Sydney or Brisbane. Another result from this study was that the proportion of greenhouse gas emissions embodied in the materials can be high. For the options that use very little timber in the Sydney and Brisbane climate zones, producing the materials contributed more than 43% of all greenhouse gas emissions associated with that house. In the Melbourne climate zone, the embodied proportion is lower, as operational energy makes a much larger contribution. The second study compared the life cycle's impacts of Melbourne's Forte building with a reference building over a 50 year period. The Forte building included cross laminated timber panels as the main structural material and energy efficient lighting and HVAC systems. The reference building was to a similar design but used predominantly reinforced concrete as the main structural material. It included lighting and HVAC systems that complied with building regulations. This chart shows the comparative impacts for the two buildings across six indicators, such as global warming potential and cumulative energy demands. The impacts for the Forte building are in blue and those of the reference building in red. In each case, the impacts for the timber-rich Forte building are lower than the reference building except for demand of renewable energy. When carbon sequestration in the timber is included, the Forte's building's impacts for global warming potential are 22% lower than the reference building. And non-renewable cumulative energy demand is 16% lower. The demand for renewable energy is much higher as considerable renewable energy is embodied in the timber panels. In summary, all material production generates environmental impacts. Life cycle assessment is the method used to systematically evaluate the environmental impacts or costs generated over a product's or system's lifetime, from cradle to grave. The stages of a life cycle analysis include setting the goal and scope for the study, compiling an inventory for inputs and outputs, evaluating the potential environmental impacts, and interpreting the results. Life cycle assessment methodology addresses the limitations of other comparison methods, but is too complex to use for everyday decision making. Two Australian LCA studies show that timber rich construction options have lower environmental impacts than comparable construction systems across most indicators, and overseas studies produce similar results.